Hello guys, in this video we're going to talk about the relationship between geometry and algebra. So far this year we've been doing lots and lots of algebra, uh, dealing with polynomials, how to operate them, how to multiply them, how to factor them, how to solve certain type of equation that involve polynomials and stuff like that. But I think it is important that we see how all those things are related with geometry. So to begin with, I'm going to uh, show you one example that you may remember from previous years, and it's about the Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem can be summarized with a formula formula that says something like a square plus b square equals c square but where does that come from and well if you remember it's about having triangles it's about having triangles a triangle like this in which we may have certain type of angle here and this is very important this is a 90 degrees angle so what does the Pythagoras theorem say it says that you can call this side A and you can call this side B and so the hypotenuse would be C so in this type of triangle it is true that A square plus B square equals C square. But what is the actual meaning of that? The actual meaning of it is that squaring is having a square. If the length of this leg is A, then we can make a square with sides all A. Therefore, the area of this would be A square. Now, if the length of this vertical side is V, we can have a triangle, a uh, square, sorry, with sides B as well. So the area of this second rectangle, of this second square, is V square. All right. And then this triangle, we can make a square with side C and therefore the area of this is c square. Now, every time that we have a right triangle, the sum of this area plus this area equals this area. And that's a simple geometric way of looking at it. But there are also other cases. I want to show you another that's more... Um, how to say? We've been in touch with it all this year and is uh, the binomial, this binomial. Now let's begin having a line that its length is A. Alright, so if the length of that is A we can have another vertical line here whose length is also A. So as you know, the area of this square would be a square. Nothing too strange there. But what if, instead of just a, we have a segment that's like a, it measures a from here to here, and b from here to here. Well, the length of all this would be a plus b so this and we could have the vertical sides just the same so this could be a and a little bit more b let me erase this okay so this side is also a plus b length a plus length b 
Now let's find some areas with a square. Let's say first we find this area. Of course, a times a, well, this is a square. And then this dotted line, I'm going to continue them. Let's find the area of this little square here. It's a square because the base measures b and the height measures b as well. So b times b is b squared. But what about these two rectangles here? The area of this rectangle is base times height, as always. This measures a, because this is a, and the height is b. So base times height is just a b. And here we have another rectangle whose base is b and whose height is a. So the area of this rectangle is b a. So what happened when we found the area of a plus b times a plus b? What we got was a square b square a b and b a but as you remember the order of factors does not change the product meaning we can rewrite this simply as a b therefore a plus b square equals a square plus b square plus 2 times a b and that's a known result that we've been using all this year good we've been here and here now uh, the other day I asked you uh, if you remember how to graph stuff some of you said yes some of you said no uh, probably my question was not very concrete but and I know since you are a graders you do know how to graph some stuff in particular you've been graphing in physics in your science classes you've been doing stuff like this you've been graphing velocity or speed versus time or maybe acceleration versus time and you may have seen graphs like these or another maybe like this etc so you know how to graph you have some ideas of how to graph now if I ask you, you're probably going to answer correctly. But in these examples in physics, what's always the independent variable? Well, if you make just a little bit memory, the independent variable always goes in the x-axis, in the horizontal axis. This is the independent variable. And on the vertical axis, it always goes the dependent variable so in this type of graph the acceleration depends on the time how much acceleration we have or speed or position is going to depend on the time so time does not depend on anything that's why it's called independent and acceleration or speed velocity whatever depends on the other so that's why it's called the dependent variable so I want you to have that in mind because there are many other types of graphs that we can do for instance we may graph a relationship an algebraic relationship what if we have let's say um, 2x minus 3 well, just like that, you know it is a binomial, right? It's made of two terms, and you know, and 
you should remember that the degree of this is the degree of the highest power of x so that is 1 the degree of this binomial is 1 right but how do we graph this just like that we only have one variable we need another variable that depends on this well that's simple we do this y is going to depend on x and to graph this on on a coordinate plane like this well we're going to do an in and out chart an in and out chart is simply a table in which we give random values to the x and we see how much we obtain in the y so let's begin I don't know and what happens if x is negative 1 if x is negative 1 then we have to plug this value on the formula that we have that's going to be 2 times negative 1 minus 3 and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 good now let's do another value for x let's say 0 that's easy because 2 times 0 is going to be 0 minus 3 well that's just negative 3 let's do a couple more positive 1 let's say so to find the value of y we do 2 times 1 minus 3 and 2 minus 3 is negative 1 and one last x equals 2 but 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 is positive 1 so we have coordinates remember on an x and y plane we have coordinates these are the coordinates we have negative 1 comma negative 5 so we may to our coordinate plane a little bit more complete this is one two three four five negative one negative two negative three etc one two three four five negative one negative two negative three negative four negative five etc so what points do we have in this case well we know that if x is negative one the value of y is negative 5 so something around here good that's a point in our chart now 0 comma negative 3 0 movement on x negative 3 on y positive 1 on the x negative 1 on the y positive 1 negative 1 something here and another 2 comma 1 2 comma 1 so what we have in this case is something like this that's more or less a straight line and the equation of this line is y equals 2x minus 3 we could keep going giving more and more random values for x and we would be getting more and more values for y uh, but let's leave it there I just want to say something about the degree of this polynomial that we have here as you know this is degree 1 and when we graph it what it means is how many times maximum can the line cross the x-axis of course in this case it only crosses it once there is only one place on the x-axis where the line crosses it and you know how to find those roots by the way let's let's do it here for completeness you know how to find those roots those solutions you make it equal to zero and then you just isolate
So when x equals 3 halves, y is 0. 3 halves is 1.5. We already knew that point, but just to make sure we found it with algebra. Good. Uh, but we can also have other types of equations. What if, for example, we have an equation that looks like this? What if we have y equals to 3, for example? How do we graph that? Well, to begin with, we can ask ourselves, what's the degree of this polynomial? Because you're going to tell me, well, that's a monomial. It's only made of one term. And yes, that's right. And what's the degree of this? The degree of that, since there is no x, there is no variable, the degree is 0. Let's keep that in mind. Now. Since there is no variable, you may say, but I don't know how to graph that. Well, it's actually simpler than it looks. You just need to see where is y equal to positive 3. Well, it's right here. This graph is no matter what the value of x is, it's always going to give y equal to 3. So it's a line like that. An horizontal line like that. See, there is no variable. So for any value of x, the y value is always 3. Now, remember what we said about the degree in the previous graph? In the previous graph, the degree was 1. And we said that at much, the graph could cross the x-axis once. In this time, since the degree is 0, then our line is not going to cross the x-axis. It's going to cross it zero times, if you will, but not crossing it. Good. Uh, now let's do another more uh, complicated example that has to do much more with what we have been doing this year. What if we have an equation, well, a polynomial, um, x square um, x square minus 5x plus 6. Well, you know this kind of polynomial. You know how to do with this kind of thing. To have a graph, we need two variables, x and y. Pretty good. So. There we go. And the values of the axis. Nice. Um, so, for instance, you know how to find the roots. Actually, now that I remember, in one of the quizzes we did in the second term, the question was, uh, find the roots of this polynomial. Well, another way to understand finding the roots is find the zeros of this. So, find when this equation equals zero. And you know how to do that because you know that when you have a trinomial, you may try finding additive factors, which makes everything much easier. So let's see if we can do that here. Uh, are there two numbers that multiply together, give me 6, and add it together, give me negative 5? Yes, they are. Negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, and negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. All right, so that gives us two possibilities 
x minus 2 is 0 or x minus 3 is 0 meaning x is 2 or x is 3 so do we have coordinates for that? yes if x equals 2 then y is 0 so that's a point 2 comma 0 x comma y same here 3 comma 0 so where is 2 comma 0? 2 comma 0 is here and where is 3 comma 0? 3 comma 0 is here right so we have those two points to begin with uh, now let's say we want to find more and more points well what we can do is try the in and out chart that we did last time and we give some random values for x and find the associated values with y that depend on this relationship so I don't know let's say 0 what happens when x is 0 well when x is 0 we have 0 square minus 5 times 0 plus 6 0 minus 0 plus 6 so if x is 0 y is positive 6 that's like here okay very high now another random value uh, 1 alright so what happens to the y when x is 1 so we would have 1 square minus 5 times 1 plus 6 1 square is 1 1 minus 5 that's negative 4 negative 4 plus 6 this is positive 2 so if x equals 1 y is positive 2 so we have another point here we already know that 2 is here 3 is here so let's do 4 what happens if x equals 4 uh, we didn't get that we already know that if x is 2 uh, well we already found that but just to be sure 2 square is 4 4 minus 10 is negative 6 plus 6 is 0 and we already know this as well 3 square minus 5 times 3 plus 6 this is 9 minus 15 negative 6 plus 6 0 see those were two points that we already knew and another one let's do positive 4 so that would be 4 square minus 5 times 4 plus 6 this is 16 16 minus 20 that's negative 4 negative 4 plus 6 that's positive 2 so another point is 4 comma 2 something around here and 5 5 let's do let's see what happens when 5 is x this is 5 square minus 5 times 5 plus 6 okay so this is 25 minus 25 so nothing nothing plus 6 6 so 5 comma 6 that's another point 5 comma 6 and we are whoops I'm gonna have to erase this something like that alright but what happens and this is related to the Khan Academy videos that you've been watching what happens between 2 and 3 is there anything high, uh, funny or strange there what what's exactly in the middle between 2 and 3 well that would be 2.5 but 2.5 converted to fractions is just 5 halves 1 2 3 4 5 halves right 
So let's see what happens if x is five halves. We're gonna have to square some fractions with no problem there. Same equation. Five halves square, that's twenty-five quarters minus five times five halves. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, plus six, six holes. Okay. Um, well, to do this, we need the least common denominator. We have denominators four, two, and one, so the LCD is four. The first fraction stays the same. Now, in order for this to become a 4, we need to multiply times 2. So we multiply the top times 2 as well. 50 fourths. So this and this are equivalent fractions. And then we need another fraction. Denominator 1 times 4 is 4. Numerator 6 times 4, that's 24. So, alright, we are set. We have 25 minus 50 plus 24. 25 plus 24, that's 49. 49 minus 50 over 4. Alright, well, this is just negative 1 fourth. So, if x is 5 halves, y is negative 1 fourth. So something like this. There we can have an idea of the graph that we have. Of course we haven't seen this but this is a parabola. A parabola has the shape of something like that, more or less. Now, remember what we said about the degrees? What's the degree of this trinomial? The degree of this is the degree of the highest power of x, so 2. That means that at much, our graph is going to cross the x-axis two times. And that's exactly what happens here. At much, it crosses two times. So one more thing I'd like to say about this example we just saw is that uh, if you've already seen those Khan Academy videos I recommended, uh, you'll see that in the end they start talking about intervals. And we could do exactly the same in this case. For this equation that we have, there would be three intervals interesting to analyze. One would be from 2 to the left, then another would be between 2 and 3, right in the middle, and then from 3 to the right. If we do that, uh, seeing how the value of y is positive or negative, we would see that for values of x less than 2, the square term is always going to overcome the negative 5x, so this is always going to be positive. On top of that, it's adding 6. So the far we go, the further we go to the left, the more positive it's going to be. And exactly the same happens with values more than 3. The more we go to the right, the more positive it's going to be. Just think about how this square term works. Let's say we want to do uh, a value of x that's 10. Well, just squaring it, it's already 100. So this would be 50. 100 minus 50, that's 50. Plus 6, that's 56. So it's, it keeps growing and growing. The interesting part here is between 2 and 3. We already found that 
for five halves exactly in the middle between two and three the value of y is negative one fourth so uh, for any value in that interval between two and three this equation is going to be negative now there are other case scenarios um, in this one we saw that the maximum times that the curve can cross the x-axis is two and well one is here and one is here but let's see what that maximum number of time means let's say we have another well-known equation another well-known trinomial for example um, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Can we factor this to find the roots? Yeah, how do we do that? Well, this is x plus 1 and x plus 1. Meaning that if 0 is to be x plus 1, then x is negative 1. So this is a double root, remember, because it is the same answer for this factor and for this factor. Now, factor uh, graph, how does it look like? We could see, we, we could graph this with the same method, doing an in and out graph. And all right, let's do uh, one one case. By the way, we already know that if x is negative one, then y is zero. So we have a coordinates negative one comma zero negative one comma zero is right here okay so let's do i don't know negative two let's see what the value of y is when x is negative two and we plug it in this formula this is negative two square plus two times negative two plus one negative two square is negative two times negative two which is four four minus 4 plus 1 0 plus 1 that's positive 1 so that value is right there now let's do 0 an easy one 0 square plus 2 times 0 plus 1 well this is just 0 2 times 0 is 0 so this is just 1 so if x is 0, the value of y is 1. And how about positive 1? Well, this is 1 square plus 2 times 1 plus 1. This is 1 plus 2 plus 1. That's also known as 4. So something like that. And how about, well, negative 3 for completeness? we would have negative 3 square plus 2 times negative 3 plus 1 positive 9 minus 6 positive 9 minus 6 that's 3 plus 1 4 so in this case we are also around here so what does this graph look like this is another parabola that has something peculiar about it and the peculiar thing about it is that it only touches it only crosses the x-axis once we already found that when we made the polynomial equal to zero so the degree of the polynomial which in this case is 2 
tells us the maximum number of times that the graph would cross the x-axis. Maximum. It doesn't mean it has to be that number. In this case, it doesn't have to be two times. It can be less than that. Well, turns out it's only one.